Solving general chemistry problems. Thermodynamics. So here's a problem. The system undergoes a change wherein six joules of heat are transferred into it. At the same time, the system performs one and a half joules of work on the surroundings. What was the change in internal energy for the system? So whenever you encounter a problem that discusses work and heat and internal energy, you can know that it's a first law problem. The first law of thermodynamics is delta U, the change in internal energy, is equal to Q plus W, where Q is the flow of energy in the form of heat, and W is the flow of energy in the form of work. Now this is the important convention for these problems, and by convention I mean that scientists all agree that this is how we view the situation. Q is positive when energy flows into the system in the form of heat, and W is positive when energy flows into the system in the form of work. Now a key feature to this kind of problem is that while the arithmetic is trivial, the real challenge is all about interpreting the language of the questions in terms of the sign of Q and W. So let's take a look at this specific problem. It reads that six joules of heat are transferred into it. Energy is going in. Q must be plus 6.00 joules. It also reads that system performs one and a half joules of work on the surroundings. So system uses its energy to do work on the outside. Energy must be flowing out of the system in the form of work. W must be minus 1.50 joules. So with that we solve the problem using the first law equation. Delta U is equal to Q plus W, which is equal to plus 6.00 joules plus a minus 1.50 joules. 6.00 joules minus 1.50 joules equals 4.50 joules. This is the answer to the problem. We're done. Except <clears throat> I would like to offer one word of warning. As at most universities, there will be a large science building where the chemistry department is found. Somewhere across campus, there's another large building for engineering. And some students will spend some time in the science building and then travel across campus to the engineering building. The question I ask is, what happens to this kind of question, the one we've been studying, when you move from the science building to the engineering building? Why should anything happen? Well, look at this. Over in the science building, we tell you that the first law is delta U equals Q plus W and that W is positive when engine energy flows into the system in the form of work. Then you might have a student who migrates over to the engineering building. They enroll in one of the engineering thermodynamics courses and then suddenly they're told that the first law of thermodynamics is delta U is equal to Q minus W. They claim that W is positive when energy flows out of the system in the form of work. Why is there a difference? Who's right? Well, scientists are concerned with understanding the system as a whole, and so when energy flows in from whatever source, it increases the internal energy. And so they adopt the convention mentioned earlier. By contrast, the engineer is interested by in how much work she can get out of a system for the least amount of energy she has to put in in order to run a machine. Thermodynamics originally developed during the Industrial Revolution as people tried to employ heat engines to run machines. Throw in more coal or wood to burn, to heat a boiler, and then how much work could you get out of to run a machine? So both forms of the first law are correct, as long as you work with the appropriate convention about the flow of energy in the form of work. It is important, however, for you to remember that when you were in the science class, it is this statement of the first law that you must utilize. Now, there's another fundamental idea I would like to emphasize. Throughout thermodynamics, we will be continually speaking about the system. And at other times, we'll be talking about the surroundings. So what is the system? You might be puzzled as to why this is important, but it can be confusing in many situations. Now, we might envision a reaction occurring inside an Erlenmeyer flask. We could draw an imaginary boundary around it. And thermodynamics asks that we carefully monitor the flow of energy and the flow of mass across this boundary in order to understand what is happening. 
Now the first law informs us that energy may flow in the form of work or in the form of heat. An open system allows for the flow of mass and energy in both forms. A closed system only allows for energy transfer. An isolated system inhibits both mass and energy transfer. The scientist tries to understand how chemical reactions are occurring, how the atoms rearrange themselves and how the molecules are vibrating and rotating as this is how they also store energy. An engineer will be concerned with mechanical devices inside the system that enable or control the mass energy flow across the boundary, a valve to control mass flow, a heat exchanger for heat flow, a turbine for work flow, and so forth. Remember that as a scientist we're trying to understand the reason why a chemical reaction occurs and what we might be able to do to control that reaction. When we talk of the system, think of the molecules participating in the reaction, both reactant and product molecules together. Energy being exchanged with this system of molecules is the key to understanding why a given reaction occurs the way it does. This distinction is important in calorimetry experiments as we must distinguish the calorimeter itself from the substance being studied inside the calorimeter. And with what is this energy being exchanged? Well, this is the surroundings. This is everything else in the universe. Well, the universe is pretty big, but in practice, our system may be insulated from the surroundings by preventing heat transfer, or mechanically isolated, preventing work transfer, or materially isolated to prevent mass transfer. So we just need to consider the relevant part of the universe as the surroundings. So first law problems help us to understand the conventions of thermodynamics as we come to appreciate the significance of terms such as system and surroundings.